Two Rivers stabbing, victim hospitalized, and suspect in custody. Plymouth Council to vote on citywide smoking ban, a deadly season for Wisconsin snowblowers. These and other local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Tuesday, February 25th, 2020. A 30-year-old Two Rivers man is in stable condition with serious injuries after being stabbed by his roommate. Manitowoc County Sheriff Dan Hartwig says that the incident happened during the noon hour Wednesday on Matanu Drive in the township of Two Rivers. Reports indicate that the two men became involved in a verbal and physical confrontation during which 23-year-old John Paul Douglas Brucher stabbed the victim numerous times. Brucher is being held in the Manitowoc County Jail pending his initial appearance on attempted homicide charges. Scammers violate the law when they call you, and now it appears they are using the law, in this case, the Sheriff's Department, to try getting your money. According to the recent post on their Facebook page, numerous reports have been received by the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department from victims who received the phone call. The scammer identifies themselves as a member of the Sheriff's Department who has a warrant for the victim's arrest. The scammer claims that an arrest will be made unless bond is posted immediately. The sheriff's office says that if you receive such a call, it is a scam. Do not give out any personal information or make any sort of payment. It could be hard to find a place to light up away from your home in Plymouth, depending on how the vote goes at tonight's Plymouth Common Council meeting. The council will discuss an ordinance that bans smoking or vaping of any sort in enclosed indoor areas, public or private, and on property owned or operated by the city of Plymouth within 12 feet of any entrances to enclosed places owned by the city. The ordinance would also ban smoking at any sports arena, even if outdoors, and at bus shelters and in mass transit vehicles, whether privately or publicly owned. Bars, restaurants, and workplaces would be able to establish an outdoor smoking area that are separated by the reasonable distance from entrances. This ordinance goes to so far as to ban any person in charge from providing matches, ashtrays, or other equipment for smoking at locations where smoking is prohibited. Private homes and living facilities would have exemptions and penalties start at $30 for the first offense and $100 for subsequent offenses. The meeting scheduled for 8 p.m. tonight will allow citizens comments limited to three minutes per person from those who register prior to the start of the meeting. A proposal to allow bars to stay open until 4 o'clock a.m. during the upcoming Democratic National Convention in Milwaukee got a tweak before passing the 85-12 on Thursday as the State Assembly in Madison concluded its last session of this election year. In a compromise that hopes to garner support in the Senate, the counties affected were reduced to 14, including Sheboygan, Washington, Dodge, Ozaki, and Fond du Lac. Governor Evers has signaled that he would sign the legislation if it's passed by the Senate and local governments would still need to okay the later hours. Bars currently need to close at 2 o'clock a.m. weekdays and 2.30 on Saturdays and Sundays. A spike in flu cases has caregivers busy at Sheboygan's Hospital Sisters Health System, St. Nicholas Hospital. So far this flu season, the hospital case has seen a total of 60 flu cases and seven flu-related hospitalizations. For comparison, last year at this time, the hospital had seen a total of 26 flu cases and nine flu-related hospitalizations. 
On January 3rd, the significant rise in flu activity prompted visitor restrictions at St. Nicholas in an effort to keep patients safe and to help prevent the spread of germs. Chief Nursing Officer Mary Martin says that at this point in the season, getting a flu shot now is still the best defense against the disease, especially for young children, pregnant women, people age 65 and older, and those with chronic health conditions. And finally, while conditions have been on and off in our area, there has still been plenty of opportunities to enjoy over 25,000 miles of groomed trails in the state that gave birth to the sport of snowmobiling. But along with the fun has come tragedy. The most recent occurred this weekend when three men from Illinois were killed in snowmobile crashes in the North Woods. The first crash happened shortly after 4 o'clock a.m. Saturday in the town of Germain, St. Germain. A 38-year-old man from Illinois was killed. Then, about five hours later, another fatal snowmobile accident, this one in the town of Plum Lake. A 27-year-old man from Illinois died. The third man from Illinois was killed early Sunday in Iron County. That crash happened in the town of Mercer. DNR Conservation Warden Lieutenant Martin Stone, who is the administrator for the DNR's off-highway vehicle program, noted that 17 people have died while snowmobiling in Wisconsin so far. That compares with 16 during all of last year's season, and most of those were involved public trails, while at least four were on frozen waterways. Lieutenant Stone noted that speed and alcohol tend to be contributing factors in most cases, and riders should ride ethically. That means slow down, avoid drinking before and during the ride, and stay on the trail because leaving trails means trespassing. The DNR has a snowmobile safety page with other helpful information. And that is our report for today. Join me again on Thursday for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.